Uh, Ted has a deepest free dive of 279 feet, the longest breath hold uh, around seven minutes. Um, he is a past USA record holder and captain of a U.S. free diving team. He's appeared on the Discovery Channel with Tim Kennedy for TV show Hard to Kill and worked with Jack Dorsey, CEO of Twitter and Pioneer in online education. I'm sure you've seen some of his free dive safety courses. Uh, and then one thing you guys probably don't know is that he has a body built by beer, bourbon, and barbecue. <laughs> so um, hopefully we'll see some, th you know, you growing on some uh, sports channel or something like that in the future. In, in the future, in the future. <laughs> yeah. So we're running uh, a special for this week just until Sunday. Uh, at Florida Free Divers for $25 off uh, any type of level one or level two course. I'm sure Ted will mention in here how important courses are as well. Uh, but the code for that is FLF course 25. And we'll mention that again. And it will be in the link as well for the YouTube and the story after. So today, uh, Ted's going to kind of go over some equalization tips and tricks. And uh, I'll leave it to you, Ted. Okay. Sounds good. So equalizing is, is basically, it's one of the most challenging things that freedivers run up against, right? So as an instructor, you know, what limits how deep you can dive, a student can dive in my intro, intro course, my level one course, is how deep they can equalize. What limits how deep someone can dive in my intermediate course is how deep they can equalize. You're talking advanced courses, competitive divers. It's always equalizing that is the limiting factor, right? Equalizing is supposed to be easy. It's supposed to be effortless. It's not supposed to require anything other than you going like that, right? It's not supposed to send you back on the boat because you can't dive anymore. It's not supposed to cause you stress, right? It's not supposed to, I mean, it's supposed to be, it's just supposed to happen, right? But for a lot of divers, that is a serious holdup, right? I have so many of my students, you know, that are spear fishermen and they're like, the equalizing sends it back on the boat, right? They got, I got about an hour in and then I'm done, right? Or they go, if I go on a trip for three or four days, by the third day, I'm done, right? Absolutely. Um, there's just, uh, you know, I see spearfish that go through my program that have 20 years of experience and some of the things I'm going to share with you guys today, they're totally unaware of, right? So I would say this is a, a common in a lot of things in free diving is when you take these free diving classes, there's just so much stuff that you just didn't know, right? That you just weren't aware of. Um, so I'm going to go over three of the most valuable equalizing secrets that I know of. These are things that I teach and all of my students um, stick around because at the end, uh, I'll be doing a QA. and a If you guys have questions about equalizing, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you want. And I'm also uh, going to be announcing a brand new course. I created a special offer that's going to be good for 24 hours just for the folks that are watching this video. It's going to be um, announcing a new uh, equalizing course that I have that's uh, targeting people that have struggling in intermediate depths, right? People that struggle between 50 and 130 feet, typically 70, 80 when they start having issues. Uh, I've got a new course that will address that, so I'll be going over that at the end. That's awesome. So um, I started as a dive instructor. I was a scuba instructor down in the Keys. I, I started teaching scuba in 2005, uh, Children's Scuba Center Marathon. And I literally had, my ears were so bad that I was having to quit teaching scuba because I couldn't equalize my ears. So this was a, unfortunately a very common occurrence for me. I would be teaching a scuba class. I'd take my five students off the back, four students, we'd jump off the back of the boat. We head to the reef 20, 30 feet. I'm like, all right guys, let's head down to the bottom. And then we all started to go down. And I can't go past five feet. I have to grab all the students and bring them up. And like, I cannot equalize my ears at all. I've got four students. I'm teaching a free diving class. Like, I mean, a scuba class. That's a problem. So I would look at the dive master, tell them to switch, which meant, hey, I can't equalize. And the, the dive master would jump in and they would take over the class. Uh, and then I would you know, go back on the boat. You're a scuba instructor. That's not a good position to be in where you are regularly having to get someone else finish up your class, right? So... I quit diving so much. I started managing the shop and, you know, I asked the more experienced people what was going on. They said, you are overdove. Apparently that was some technical thing, overdove. And that just meant because I've been diving for two, three years at a busy dive shop all the time. Boom, boom, boom. There's like, you're overdove. Let's quit diving. That's all I got. Right? So, I, so I just kind of stopped diving so much. Um, and I started managing the shop and kind of that was that. Then I took a free diving class. Um, and... 
I was obsessed with it. Then I became, went through the instructor program and I was literally about to go to the instructor program and there was my brain was going, Ted, you had to quit teaching scuba because your ears were yeah. so messed up and now you're flying to Hawaii to do a free diving Hawaii. course where like you go, like, you can't even go down once and stay down, right? Like, what are you doing? I'm like, I said, I don't hear. And so I go take the free diving course and I pass, but my ears are done. I couldn't have done an extra day of diving, but I was like, ooh, I'm a free diving instructor. I was super excited. You know, almost immediately I'm at this three week free diving competition with PFI. And by the fourth day I'm done. I can't dive at all. I can't dive at all. I'm furious, I'm pissed, I'm like, I should have never done this, I've wasted all my money. I just, and, and so Kirk comes in and is like, you know, I heard you have these equalizing problems. I'm like, yeah. So he goes, you know, in the, the classes that we teach, he's like, you know, in class we talk about what I'm gonna teach you guys, I'm gonna call equalizing secret number one. He's like, are you doing that? And I'm like, no. And then he's like, okay, the thing that I'm gonna teach you guys a little bit equalizing secret number two, he's like, are you doing that? I'm like, no. And then he's like, the third thing that I'm going to teach you guys, are you doing that? And I'm like, no. And he's like, well, I don't know what to tell you. Just walk out. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I feel kind of stupid right now. All right. So this, once I started doing those three things that basically, I, I just don't have equal. I'm not saying that my ears are perfect. I mean, but I, I don't, I'm, I, I'm not unable to equalize anymore. Right. Ever since I started doing these three things. Right. So let's go over what they are. Uh, and I will tell you the third secret you guys would be probably very surprised about, unless you've, uh, you might have heard it, but most, most of you haven't, definitely haven't gone through it, of course. Okay, so the first one, easiest, uh, and that's hydration, right? You want to be hydrated, right? So like, you know, my classes, everyone's got bottled water, right? <laughs> first day of class, right? I got water for them, right? Because I want to keep them, want to keep them hydrated. As you start to get dehydrated, these guys, these station tubes will get sticky, right? They're more likely to stick, all right, so you've got, a, you've got an issue there. You may have noticed that I, I know a lot of spear fishermen um, are dehydrated in the mornings that they go spear fishing, right? And that sometimes because they're over, right? And you may have noticed that you're more likely to have ear issues on those days, right? Absolutely. Because you're getting dehydrated, right? So hydration you know, is really, it's, I mean, you can really think about it starting the day before, right? It's not like you're about to jump off the back of the boat and you get the thing of water and you pound a bunch of water as you're like, you know, jumping in the water. That doesn't really do anything, right? So think of it as the night before, wake up, super hydrated. I, that will help. Um, if you're properly hydrated, you're going to be peeing almost clear, right? If you're peeing yellow, like you're, you're, <laughs> you're not hydrated enough. And, and if you drink a bunch of beer that, and you pee clear, that doesn't count, right? You're drinking water. Yeah, right? absolutely. <laughs> All right, second one, dairy, right? We, we want to, as a free diver, if you want to make your ears easier to equalize, you want to minimize dairy. I'm not saying none. I'm not saying you can't have it. I have, you know, milk, cheese, all that stuff. It's okay. You just don't want to, like, I, you know, I, I don't drink milk. I, but I, you know, I'm not going to get double cheese in the cheeseburger. I'm going to, you know, not get the milkshake. I, I want to minimize those types of things. What that dairy will do is it for sure makes equalizing more difficult. You talk to competitive free divers, and you don't need to do this because you're not a competitive free diver, most likely. They won't, most of them won't touch dairy, right? If I'm in a free diving competition, I'm trying to dive crazy deep, I will I'll almost do everything I can to avoid it, right? Um, you do not need to do that for you know, what most people are doing. What I do if I'm teaching a class, two days, before I'm teaching, I start trying to minimize that dairy, right? I just try to minimize it, right? And then what I know is when the class is done on Sunday, Kathy jokes around and because she knows before I get the class, she's got to, you know, do dairy, not so much dairy. And then on the, the, after the class is over, she gives me a dairy hangover and she'll make everything she can. is just tons of dairy, cheese, appetizers, all that stuff. And then I'll wake up Monday morning. And I'm not saying I can't equalize my ears, but I can feel that it's definitely harder than it was all weekend. So that definitely uh, kind of that makes, sticky feeling. Yeah, for sure. Right. Um, and it's just, it's just something you can, you can change that will, that will make a difference. Um, when Kirk was having that conversation with me and came in, I was literally eating a bowl of cereal. Like, <laughs> he's like, you remember what we're talking about not dairy? And I'm like, mm -hmm. and I'm like oh, right. Yeah. Right. Um, now the third thing, actually really, I'm going to put one other thing in here. Um, 
There's actually a sport of secrets. Um, is I'll just bring this up quickly because it gets asked a lot is the drugs. Like, should, should, if, uh, question, is it, should I take medication? Should I not take medication? And here's what I'll tell you. I don't think that you should be taking meds just to take meds, right? So what I will tell you is a lot of scuba divers will tell you things about Acra and, and, and Sudafed. And those things do open those things up. Not gonna lie to you, but as a free diver, those things are both accelerants and they raise your heart rate up. And as a free diver, we wanna be, we wanna be relaxed, right? So we don't, don't like things like that. Um, I'm not saying there wouldn't be a circumstance I wouldn't, but in general, I wouldn't do it. In general, I wouldn't take anything. If you don't, if, if, you, if, you're all, if you're equalizing right, you're doing friends, all these things, most of the time you don't need to do it. Very rarely are people required to take medication. That might not be, that might be, but most of the time I would start with nothing. The one drug that I would say take in specific circumstances is I used to tell all my students take and take mucinex, like no matter what. Now I don't do that. For because I, I think it, what I tell them now is if you are coming down with a cold, you feel you're congested, you you feel something's not right, start taking mucinex uh, and the, just the one that comes in the blue bottle. The reason I say blue is mucinex comes in different colors, greens and reds, and those are other drugs that we don't want. All you want is the expectorant, right? And what that'll do is if you're feeling like you're starting to get something, that'll take all the crud that's in your head, your ears, your sinuses, and it'll start making you get that stuff out. But the key is you got to take it two days before because you want as much of that crud out as be before you jump in the water. You can't like take that on the boat trip out and expect it to do anything. Yeah, right? absolutely. So the generic I, name for that being the glufenicin too, if they can't yeah. get access to the mucinex. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't tell my students to take anything unless they feel like they're coming down with something. I'm like, what can you do? I'm like, absolutely, in that situation, take that. Right? Yeah, okay, sure. now here's the big one. If I'm, if I'm in front of a room full of 100 scuba divers, free divers, and I ask them the following questions, and if you're listening, I want you to think. Have you ever been diving and felt like there was water in your ear that wouldn't come out after you came on the boat? Have you ever felt on the boat trip back that one or both of your ears, your hearing is muffled? Have you ever noticed that if you go on a spearfishing trip three, possibly four days in a row, that it gets harder and harder to equalize every day you're out there? If I have 100 scuba divers and free divers and spearfishers in front of me, I expect 99 hands to go up, right? I expect almost everyone has had one, if not all of those problems happen to them, right? And I will tell you that is not, well, unfortunately it is normal because it happens to so many people, but you are getting, you are getting, you are injuring your ear. It's an actual specific injury to your ear that is avoidable and should not happen. But Everyone thinks it's normal. When I was a dive instructor, I used to regularly come on the boat and I can't get the water out. And the captain's like, no, no, you gotta do it like that. And I'm like, you know, doing all the different things to get the water out. And I can't get the water to come out, right? And then I go, I'm no dummy. I go to, to, to CVS and I get the swimmer's ear, right? It says, gets the water out. I put the swimmer's ear in, that won't get it to come out. Then on the boat trip in, I hear like one of the ears is muffled and I just, oh, that, like, it's annoying because when that happens, it's gonna, it might last for a whole day. Feel that there's cotton in my ear. When I go to sleep at night, I'm no dummy. I sleep like this. I'm gonna make the water drain out of my ear, right? That's not water in your ear, right? That's why this doesn't work. That's why going like this doesn't work, right? It's actually blood that's in your tympanic membrane, right? That it feels like there's water in there. It's not water, it's blood. It's actually not in your ear canal, it's in your eardrum, right? And that's why this doesn't work. In fact, when I used to go like this to go to sleep at night, I should have slept like that so that the blood could actually drain back down, right? right? So what's causing that is if you, were to, if you had those symptoms and you went and saw an ENT, they would scope you, they would look in there and they would see the blood in your eardrum, right? And they'd be like, oh, they would see that injury, right? And so it's called barotitis media. So they go, oh, you got barotitis media, right? So that is an actual injury to your ear. It's not normal and you shouldn't be having that happen. So if you want to get rid of those things, it's very simple. This is something that every scuba instructor will tell you. This is something that every free diving instructor will tell you. And it's so simple that people ignore it because it just it can't be that simple. If you did a scuba class or a free diving class, I bet your instructor told you to equalize early and often, right? You need to equalize before you feel pressure or pain, right? So your eardrum, right? So this is your eardrum. When you dive underwater, water pressure pushes on that eardrum and it bends it in, right? And when it bends in, you feel 
ow, ow, I feel that pressure, right? So it bends in like that. And then you equalize your ears, which pushes air from the other side of your eardrum, and it goes back to normal, and you feel good again. And then probably three seconds, five seconds later, your eardrum goes back in like that. You feel ow. You then equalize, hopefully via frenzel, but you equalize, and that pressure goes away. Right? And this keeps happening over and over. But every, you know, every five seconds, you feel ow, and then you equalize. That same group of 100 divers, remember I said 99 of them would raise their hand if, they, they, if they've ever felt water in their ear, muffled in their oh. ear, it gets hard to equalize. We lost, we lost you for a second, Ted. Okay, let me see. Let me know when I come back. Yeah, you're back now. Okay. So if you've said yes to any of those things that you feel here, you feel water in your ear, it gets hard to equalize after all the diving, I would ask you the following question. When do you equalize your ears? And most people will say, when I feel pain or pressure. They're waiting till they feel ow, and then they equalize. So, which is, which is, that's what's causing the issue. The issue is, you're, 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 when you're equalizing like this and you feel ow, that's when you equalize. At some point, your body says, hey, you suck at this. You shouldn't let my eardrum go in like this. So I'm going to fix it since you're so bad at this. And I'm gonna engorge this eardrum with blood. It fills up with blood. Why? Because fluid is less bendy, right? So now that eardrum, it's making it so it won't bend in anymore because you're so late to equalize it. And that's why you feel like there's water in your ears. You made the body put blood into the tympanic membrane because you're waiting too long to equalize, right? You should be equalizing before you feel pain, before you feel pressure. But I remember being a new scuba diver and I felt like that if I waited till that pressure built up, that it would make it easier to equalize. Like, I remember feeling that. I like, I want it to be like, and then I go, boom. That doesn't make it easier. It makes it harder and it injures your ear, right? That's an actual reoccurring injury that you don't want to, have to go to your ear, right? Baritides media, it's a real thing. You right. don't want it. But almost all divers do it regularly all the time. I remember my scuba students used to ask me about, hey, I got water in my ear. I'd high five them. I'm like, hey, it's welcome to diving. You're part, it's part of the deal, right? Like, you know, <laughs> welcome to being a diver. I didn't know any of that. Um, so you want to equalize early and often before you feel pain and pressure. Now, a little bit about that from a free diving spearfishing side. When I see free divers, spearfishermen, I see this all the time. They equalize, and then immediately, hand goes either down by the side or it goes up like this, whatever the hell they do with the hand, but it's equalize, hand goes away, kick, 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 go, equalize, hand goes away, kick, Way kick. Way too late. I mean, and you're just like, this makes no sense. Why are we doing all of this with the hands, right? Like, put the hand on the nose and keep it there. Equalize, equalize, equalize. Every other kick, right? You know, when I, my deepest free dives, you know, Almost 300 feet, I feel zero, no pain, no pressure, because I equalize that often. How could I, it doesn't matter how deep I am, if you're equalizing that frequently, you will feel nothing in your ears, nothing, right? It gets more, you have to do more difficult techniques to equalize down there, but right. you, if, as long as you're equalizing frequently, you're gonna feel nothing in your ears. Staying way um, ahead of it. Yeah, exactly, right? So uh, now, so definitely keep your hand over your nose pocket, don't always be doing all this weird stuff at your hands, right? Control it however you're doing that. The other hand just stays here. Now, here's the problem. I Same thing I tell my students, pinch the nose, right? And so what happens a lot, especially in the intermediate class, when equalizing gets trickier around 70, 80 feet, students start stressing about equalizing. And what do they, they, what do they remember me saying? They said, Ted said equalize all the time. So what they do is they clamp down on that nose because they're like, Ted said equalize all the time. And then they boom, 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 equalize, equalize. And then they get mass squeeze. And they're like, I never get mass squeeze. Why the hell did I get mass squeeze? Right. Well, Ted told me to equalize all the time. Now, I did not say keep your nose pinched because if you keep your nose pinched the whole dive, you can't exhale and equalize your mask, right? So you notice the way I do it, I'm, you know, I'm miming it, is that I keep my hand over my nose, but I'm not keeping the nose pinched the whole time because then I'm going to get mass squeeze, right? So equalize early and often. You should not feel pain or pressure. You shouldn't feel pain or pressure. You should be equalizing way before that. Don't keep the nose all the way pinched. Just boom, boom, boom. Those. So hydrate, 
more than you're used to. You should be peeing clear, right? You're going to be peeing yellow. Um, avoid dairy. Two days before you're going to go diving, try to minimize dairy. Um, and then make sure you're equalizing early and often, like hand on the nose, boom, 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 way more than you're used to, right? And that, that, those, those three things for me made me go from being unable to teach free diving, unable to teach scuba, to like instantly, I'm fine. Like, I don't have problems equalizing. I mean, I have the rare problem here and there, but I'm, it's not like I'm unable to do my job anymore, whereas I absolutely couldn't, I couldn't even teach scuba because, and that's way easier than teaching free diving from an equalizing standpoint. Yeah, it's a big game changer, definitely. Oh yeah, for sure. I, I mean, I, all my scuba instructor buddies that when I, when I went through that, I was literally calling them all. I'm like, look, you're not overdove. You just need to do these three things. And they're like, oh, we, we right. were told we were overdove. I'm like, okay, well, I, I, this is a little bit better than overdove. Right? Right, right, and right. so it definitely is, is, is super, super helpful. Okay. Now here's another thing that I'm going to uh, go over with you guys. Uh, and this is, so you may have heard this whole thing about Valsalva and Frenzel and these different equalization methods. So it is critical that you understand which method you're doing. Because right now, for those of you that are listening, some of you are equalizing via Frenzel. Some of you are equalizing via Valsalva. Frenzel is the way we must be equalizing as free divers. Well, if you want to be able to get past 30 feet easily and effortlessly and not have all these ear issues, you want to be doing Frenzel. Uh, there are plenty of spear fishermen that, that do Valsalva. They just always talk about their ear hurts and they can't get past 20 feet and have all these issues uh, and it's because they're doing Valsalva. A lot of people have never heard of Valsalva or Frenzel and are excellent free divers. They can equalize super deep. And they've they don't even know the difference. So a lot of you are doing it correctly. You don't even know what I'm talking about, but I'm going to quickly be able to show you how you can figure out which way you're doing it. Right? So uh, Valsalva which is the way most scuba divers equalize because that's the way most scuba divers teach to equalize. That's the way I taught uh, all my scuba scooters to equalize. I didn't know what the hell Frenzel was, right? I mean, it's also, you can teach someone to Frenzel in about 10 seconds, excuse me, to Valsalva in about 10 seconds, which is why everyone teaches it that way. I say, I mean, I, I teach a 12 year old kid. Hey, little Johnny, can you equalize your ears? Uh-uh. Okay, Johnny, pinch your nose for me. Uh-huh. Now blow your nose really hard. Oh, right. yeah, right. done. That's it. Do that early and often. Right. I just taught equalizing. Now I move on to the next thing, right? It's very easy to teach. Pinch and then blow your nose, right? So what Valsalva does is it takes the air that's in your lungs and it shoves it up into your ears, right? Val uh, Frenzel, which is what we want, takes the air that's in our mouth and shoves it into our ears. So here's how you can test, right? So if I were to, but I want everyone, all you guys listening, just put one hand on your stomach. You're going to pitch your nose, and you're going to equalize five times in a row. Fast. Boom, 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 boom. So watch me do it. You will notice huge nostril flare here. And you'll notice, I'll get where you can see it, no motion from the chest. Watch, it'll do five in a row. Way more than five. No movement here. If you feel your stomach compressing every time you are doing... Valsalva. Now watch my chest when I do Valsalva. Watch this. Big difference. Right. You can see that, right? If you watch my stomach, you can see that compression. You can feel it. You can see it. So if you're equalizing and you feel this every time you equalize, it's because you're doing a Valsalva. If you just diagnosed yourself doing Valsalva, let me make some predictions. You struggle to equalize your ears around 15 to 30 feet. You find that it's very difficult to equalize on the way down, but as soon as you turn around and come up, it's super easy to equalize, right? That's because of the method that you're using. Now, some people, I always say you can't go 15, past 15, 30 feet most of the time if you're doing Valsalva. Now, some people look, well, I can equalize to 50 feet using Valsalva. Well, if you go down at a 30 degree angle, maybe you can, right? But we, we want to be able to go down straight like a laser. I've seen people go to 70 feet doing Valsalva. They kick down 10 feet and they turn their head around and then they Valsalva and then they go back around and they go down 10 more feet and they stop and they turn their head around. Like, I can Valsalva and say, okay, well, if you want to free dive like that, I'll have at it. Right? You want to go down straight like a laser. Straight. 
And if you want to do that effortlessly and easily, you must be doing Frenzel. Okay, so you just diagnosed yourself as doing Valsalva and you're having, if you're, if you're having, you do Valsalva, you have no equalizing problems, then you're good. But you're most likely going to have major problems and that's not going to be fixed unless you learn Frenzel, right? So I have an online course called Roadmap to Frenzel. It's been online for two years. Um, I have personally taught over 500 people how to switch from Valsalva to Frenzel. I used to do this by one-on-one -on -one Skype sessions. I've literally done 500 Skype sessions where I taught people how to switch from one thing to the other. That each session takes me an hour to two hours. That means I spent 500 to 1,000 hours saying the same thing over and over and i'm not very smart and it took me a long time to realize that i should figure out another way to do this right and so literally that course that i created was simply out of my laziness so i didn't have to do it anymore so i didn't have to tell my i was just like just watch this right and so i i did about two years ago i love it students would show up to class and they already know how to frenzy i didn't have to talk to them i didn't have to eat i didn't do nothing they just do it right um, because that program takes my step-by-step -step method that I use when I teach the, uh, via Skype and it just puts it online. And what makes it unlike any other thing out there is it's not just me, well, it is me talking, but it's a series of videos that at the end of each video, I'll say, all right, I need you to do this. And if you can do it, awesome, I want you to watch video number two. If you can't do it, don't worry. I know I literally have seen that problem a hundred times. You need to watch video number three. So they get navigated through the course based on what problems they're having or not. Because if they're not having a problem, they don't need to hear me talk about how to fix it. They don't have it, right? So you get navigated through the program. So it's very unique. Um, so uh, I've got that program. If you're struggling to do Valsalva, I mean, if you're doing Valsalva, that's the program that's going to teach you how to do Frenzel, right? Now, the new thing that I'm announcing uh, tonight is I have a brand new program that I filmed eight months ago. And I, it, I literally, I just like forgot, I was going to launch it and then I forgot about it. And it was literally about five hours ago. I'm like, oh, I'm doing this thing tonight. I should put this, this new thing out. I was super excited about it all this time ago that I forgot about. It. So it's uh, what I call my intermediate equalizing program. A lot of students in the intermediate class struggle to equalize their ears around, they, typically it hits them around 70, 80 feet, but it can be blanketed at around 15, 130 feet. There, if you are struck, so you're not, you can do Frenzel, but you're struggling at 70, 80 feet, those depths. There's a very specific reason that you're having that issue. And so I created a course that specifically goes over that. So what I'm doing is for the next little 24 hours from doing this event is because this is a new course, whenever I launch new courses, I like to keep the, I do it as like a test run. Like, so really, really small. I don't want tons of people in it. I want to do a small number of people in it so that I can, you know, get feedback from you guys, email you, tell me what's right. All my online courses, I'm constantly switching and fixing and all this sort of stuff. So I, I want a small group in it, right? So this course will have the normal parental program in it. It's also going to have the, the new program that I definitely want you guys feedback on. Uh, I've got surveys in there that you guys can fill out. I definitely want to hear from you guys what you like about it. And then I'm also throwing in uh, another program, which is uh, the, uh, on how to activate your most primal reflex, the mammalian dive reflex. So what the heck that is and how is a spear vision and what you can do to implement that and use it on your next spear vision trip, right? So that's uh, 69 bucks. Get access to all those programs. You get access to us forever. They don't, you don't like, they don't expire. Um, so to access those programs, the easiest way is go to my website, which is immersionfreediving.com. And then, you know, on all the websites, there's the little menu bar that says home about, and you go to immersionfreediving.com. On the very top, you're going to see online classes. Click on the online classes. That'll take you right there. And you're going to see it says Florida, you know, special Florida freedivers equalizing program. You'll be able to see it right there on the page and you go through it and do that. Um, but yeah, so that'll, that's the deal with that. Um, if there's any folks that have... Um, Questions, I'm happy to do that. Yeah, um, the other thing is, you, in there. yeah, yeah. Sorry, so one ahead. thing I'll just quickly say is you'll notice in every online class that I teach, whether it's a safety course or whatever it is, none of my courses are substitutes for taking the course. Every online course I have is saying, like, you need to go take a real course where you're going to put all this theory and put it, in the, put it into action, right? And so I know that uh, I know that Florida Free Drivers have courses on the schedule right now. I know I am taking some time off. My, my, literally, my courses 
happen like right here in my house. And it's not, I, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna be super excited about having people fly from all over the place to come to the house. Right, so, right. But, um, as, but anyway, um, but yeah, so happy to answer any questions you got. Cool, so let me start off with the earlier questions real quick. Um, so any advice for divers who have a station tube dysfunction? Okay, so I don't exactly know what that means, but here's what I'll, I'll, what I'll tell you. Very rarely do people have problems uh, have a physical problem with their ears. Now, there are some people that, that there is something actually wrong is the wrong word, where they need to see an ENT and have something done and they can fix it. But what I will tell you, with 10 years of teaching experience, I have most all of those issues that people struggle with are, are because they don't know Frenzel. I know for a fact, I, have, I stopped counting over 10. I've had at least 10 people contact me saying the ENT told them to get this surgery where they, you know, pull, they, they make the eustachian tubes bigger, right? I've had it. And I, okay, yeah. right? And I'm talking to them and I'm like, you're doing Valsalva. You're gonna go get that surgery and you're gonna come back and you're gonna have the exact same damn problem because you are still doing Valsalva. ENTs know nothing about Valsalva versus Frenzel. So the first thing I would tell you is before you do anything medically, make sure you're doing Frenzel, right? Now, I have had a student, I had two years ago, I had a student that was, I would watch him do Frenzel, and when he would do Frenzel, watch my nose. That's what his nose looked like. I mean, huge flare, no movement from the stomach. I'm pinching his nose, I'm covering his, I'm putting my hand on the stomach. And I'm like, yeah, that's perfect. He goes, I feel nothing in my ears. I'm like, okay, you have medically something wrong. Like, you're absolutely doing Frenzel perfectly, but you feel no pressure in your ears. Yeah, you need to go see an ENT and see what's going on. And he, I think, was someone that had one of those invasive surgeries, and it was able to help him. Um, some people, uh, you know, they can phonase and some steroid stuff, but I just, my, my thing is, it's in my experience, it's rarely a physical thing. I mean, just do that test. If you do that test and you're doing Valsalva, I'm going to tell you that doing Frenzel is likely to fix your situation. The other thing I see a lot is people say, this ear goes, but that ear doesn't. I need to go Definitely. see the ENT. And I'm like, okay, well, let me see your Frenzel. So watch my nose. This is what I call weak Frenzel. Is my nose moving? Yeah, look at strong one. Definitely see the difference? Part. When people say one ear goes and that ear doesn't, and I look at their frenzel, I'm like, yeah, that's a weak frenzel. You just need to get your frenzel better. And in most circumstances, not all, but most of them, when they get a good, powerful frenzel, they're like, oh, it fixed it. Yeah, right? So without understanding the specifics of that guy's question, I will just tell you that more often than not, it's not a physical thing, it's a technique thing, but certainly sometimes it is a physical sure. thing. But I just find that to be vastly small small percentage yeah. but the, the only reason why i had mine was actually my station tube collapsed so that was a different story yeah like that's a no fooling around right. <laughs> no fooling yeah. around issue um bit. yeah and, and just on that the, the unfortunate thing i'm going to tell you dexter uh -uh. i'll dexter tell you <laughs> yeah he's just going somewhere he shouldn't <laughs> um is you, you think that you're going to go see this ENT and he's going to be helpful. She's going to be helpful. Most ENTs don't know anything about diving. They've never heard friends. They've never heard about Salva. So if you're going to go for an ENT, my suggestion is call Dan, Divers Alert Network, and ask, I would like to find an ENT in my area that specializes in diving. And that will put you in a way better place than talking to Joe Blow ENT. That's they, exactly what I did. And that. Yep that ENT ended up being a dive master and looked into it and all that. ENTs don't know squat about diving in ears unless sure, they have, yes, a, no. unless they specialize in diving. Right. Right. So next one um, from Greg, it says, hello, Ted was in your intermediate class and people I highly recommend Ted. My question with allergies and taking Allegra each morning, if I am having trouble equalizing, should I take some Mucinex? I mean, if you're, ta if you're taking uh, Allegra, so if you have allergies, Allegra is a good thing, you know, any one of those, Claritin, whatever, right? So, I mean, that would be, so makes sense. Um, if he's taking my program, uh, assume he's doing Frenzel correctly because he wouldn't be diving to those depths if he wouldn't. Uh, so I would say, yeah, I mean, it, it, again, I always, you know, I don't like to start with medicine. 
if but you know if it's having a problem and you're already doing the allegra you can try it and see again like i told you is is two days before make sure all the other things make sure you're super hydrated make sure you're uh avoiding dairy right in fact if you're not doing those things i would do those things first before i would try the mucinex but i will tell you i used to fool with the mucinex and like i always found that like so many of my problems were because i didn't listen to kirk and he's always talking about take it two days before right and i wouldn't because i'm like i would have seen no and what i felt like when i would take mucinex and i didn't give it enough time what i found is yeah that snot was coming out definitely a ton but i felt like i was getting blocked because i felt like there was so much mucus moving out that it was sometimes getting stuck in the ears and i would get like completely blocked for no reason but that's why me personally i feel like the mucinex is good but you need to give it time to to get all the way out and i was like oh that's why they're so adamant about doing it two days before right <laughs> so that it's you know that kind of process is more finished uh, when you're out diving for sure so I'll take a couple more questions because i know yeah. uh everyone is trying to get them in but so hogfish hustler hey ted i noticed that often on longer dive days that my tubes will close up and i can't equalize but after i after a few hours sitting in the boat, they go back to normal and I have no equalization problems. Yeah. Is so that's attributed to the things you listed earlier. Just didn't know since I'm back to normal within an hour or two rather than the next day. Yeah. That, I mean, that to me sounds like perfect example of, of, of all the things would be the equalizing more early and often, right? Go out of your way to feel no pressure in your ears. Like, obviously I'm not there. I don't know what you're doing, but that sounds like something that I hear in class all the time. And it's the, it's the waiting till you feel pain or pressure. Challenge yourself to feel no pressure in your ears. Equalize earlier than you're used to. You know, when I'm hollering at the students, I'm like, yeah, I saw you, you went pull, 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 equalize, pull, 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 equalize. And they're like, yeah, but I didn't need, you know, I'm like, yeah, but you need to equalize before you need to, right? Not when you need to. Definitely. That would so, be my, uh, my guess. So, so Greg asks, and this might be more of a, uh, you know, a doctor question, but thoughts with Allegra and Mucinex together? Ask the doctor. I don't the, Yeah, I would, I would direct them to the doctor at yeah, that point. Yeah. So um, who did a station tube surgery, the ENTs? Uh, so mine was with uh, direct, or Dr. Suresh Raja. Uh, he has multiple locations. Uh, I have a question for you. How long was your recovery time from that surgery to when you five and a half out? months? Yeah, out of the water, not in the water at all. I tried at about four, and I at five feet, it was I couldn't do it. It yeah. just it wasn't happening. That, that's why now. I mean, I, I've heard of. I, I think I've had a couple of students that have gone through it. That you know, I don't know what different surgery they have, but it was. But but um, you know, that's just why I always say like you know that's the that's the last step. But, you know, most people don't know a lot of the things that we just talked about here. They don't know about Valsalva or Frenzel. So it just thinks logically, I just need to get the EMP to do something. But they can yeah. do something and it can be helpful. But I would always just yeah. say that's the last step. Yeah, it was basically called an ET tube dilation. When I had it, it was still experimental in the U.S. Uh, Europe had approved it and then it came here and I was one of the experimental studies. Yeah. Um, and then diving as well. The, so myself and an airline pilot or like one of the main two that kind of got studied for it. So um, next one, uh, same thing. So can you recommend ENT Dive Master? Mine was director, uh, Dr. Suresh Raja. He has a longer last name, but if you just look up Raja, it's doc, I think it's R-A-J-A. -A. Um, so my buddy, John Phillips. What's up, John? Um, so John's actually an assistant intermediate instructor for PFI, kind of uh, in our crew. So Very cool. I have sinus squeezes in my forehead normally on my third scuba dive of the day and somewhere along the way of free diving sessions. Is that likely from not equalizing early and often? I am able to equalize my ears, but the pain in my forehead is excruciating on the way up and down. Yeah, sinus squeezes suck because, I mean, you're, you know, like if people, has, if someone has an equalizing problem in class, you know, it, it's likely because they're doing Valsalva instead of Frenzel. They're not equalizing soon enough. You know, it's almost always a more of a technique thing. But like when I'm diving, I don't like think, Ted, equalize your sinuses. 
right? If you're, if everything's working, you're, you're sin- it should just happen, right? And so most of the time, if you're having issues with the sinuses, it's just because there's some sort of a congestion. There's just something that's, that's not, the air is not able to move the way. It's not a, well, I'm not going to say, well, if you're having sinus squeeze, like equalize your sinuses, you idiot. Like you forgot. No, it's, it, it, it supposed to, you know, in essence, happen automatically. So, I mean, if you're having sinus issues, um, those can be reasons to see an ENT. But before I would do that, so one, uh, you've got a, like an acute way you can fix it, which I don't absolutely do not say this is a long-term solution because it's not. But um, this is one of my kind of things that I do as an instructor is if, you know, students pay a lot of money, they come down to my class and they, you know, and they're having some issue, I want to be able to throw everything I can to try to help them overcome it. So one thing that you can do is why I don't normally advocate the use of Afrin. Uh, if you're having a sinus squeeze, like let's say you have a sinus squeeze in the boat and you know, you're done for the day and you come out the next day, I would say, okay, what I want you to do is tonight, go, go get the Afrin. Don't take it at night. Don't take it when you wake up. Literally take it, squirt it in both nostrils before you jump up, like literally right before you jump in the water. Right, because the Afrin definitely does a good job of opening up the sinuses, um, but it definitely has the rebound effect. You may be aware of yeah, it. It's like definitely. you know, you talk people getting addicted to Afrin, and they're like, "That sounds ridiculous." But you, know, you use that Afrin, it'll you'll breathe good, and then when it wears off, you will breathe worse. And so then you use it again, you'll breathe great, and then you'll feel even worse. Right? If you look in the bottle, it's very clear about don't right. use it X amount of days in a row because they know about the rebound effect. Um, but this, so this, so Afrin is very good at dealing with those sinus issues, but it, it's not like an, it's not an awesome, like long-term solution. Um, so that's one thing you can do. Another thing you can do that is maybe a little better. And I would, I would suggest trying, and I can't even remember if this is what you said at the beginning would be the mucinex, right? Just to try to get the crud out of there, right? But if you are doing hydration, you are avoiding dairy, right? You've tried the, the, the regular mucinex. You know, the Afrin should work, but again, that's not a good long-term solution. But if you're doing all of that, it's not working, then go see an ENT, right? Um, I, it, I, it seems like from my experience, there's, I, again, most, but I would say if, when people come to me with ear or sinus issues, most of the time it's fixed by technique, but I notice that it seems like a little bit more of them that have sinus issues end up needing to have something done by the ENT right, than ear issues. Most all ear issues are fixed using the things we talk about doing friends of. But do those things first, and then if that doesn't work, like we said before, call Dan, find an ENT in your area, specialize in diet, and get them to take a look. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So uh, I think we'll wrap up with that. And to a- answer Will's question, uh, will this be somewhere to rewatch? Yes, we are going to be posting this on the Florida Free Divers YouTube channel. There are going to be links to um, Ted's new program that is Florida Freediver specific and obviously the, the price um, for you guys out there. And right now we're going to offer courses from now until Sunday, uh, $25 off, whether it's a level one or level two. The code is FLF course 25. Um, so this will be on the YouTube channel. Uh, thank you so much, Ted, for tuning in. I hope you and, uh, Kathy and Dexter are doing great and yep. look forward to seeing some more barbecue videos as well. Yes. Hopefully the upcoming channel, right? Yes, we've been, oh my gosh, we've been doing it. All I can say is thankfully the exercise has balanced out all the cooking as we've been cooking. <laughs> we, we had, we just realized we've, we've been, we did take out once in like the past, like almost like month and a half. We, we cook everything. So wow. um, I've been exercising like crazy to try to balance it all out. That's good. So you already have someone saying they already purchased Ted's new course bundle. Oh, so, very cool. Uh, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, definitely check that out, guys. Uh, I mean, Ted is definitely the equalization guru out there. It's who I turn to, and I think a lot of professionals turn to, and especially if they're having issues with their students, you know, everyone is utilizing his Ted's knowledge one way or another. Yeah, uh, so, and yeah. so and the one thing I'll tell you is for those like the, whoever was just signed up is like, you know, I, I, I make it very clear. I, I get really excited about doing new courses. And what I've learned is because because it's the people that go through it, you know, I, you, you probably get emails from me. What do you think? What you know, what is it working? What's not working? So definitely understand, like, I want feedback. That's how I make. I mean, every online course I have has been on like is like on Vision 10, right? Because I'm always adding stuff to it. And it's because I want the people that go through it to what I can do to make it better. So feel free to let me know. 
and once they purchase that too, it's unlimited access, right? Yeah, absolutely. Even with right? all the revisions, you know, and everything. Yeah, yeah, for sure. They, all, they, they always say, so I, 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 what only I don't like is all the online courses, they always say like you have access forever. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, 50 years from now when we're doing like virtual reality, everything. <laughs> I, so I, I like, I says, you have access to it for as long as it's reasonable for me to maintain this thing. And I plan to do that for a long, 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 long time. Right, right. That's awesome. Well, yeah, yeah. thank you so much again, Ted, for coming on. And uh, hopefully we can dive soon, get out there. Yes, I'm excited. I can't wait to get. I can't wait to get out in the water so bad. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you again. Th thanks. I, I really appreciate the opportunity. Yeah. We'll see you later. Bye. Right.